Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to The Discriminating Gamer. You know, I recently heard that some people are trying to ban Roman numerals. Not on my watch. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at the Barracks Emperors from GMT Games. We'll get back to the review in just a moment. I want to take a minute to ask you to check out my other channel, that is Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about history, books on history, military history. I even post some of my uh, lectures for my classes on there. Please check that out. Please subscribe to that channel. And now, back to the review. In the Barracks Emperors from GMT Games, up to four players take on the roles of various political factions as they attempt to capture the rival emperors in order to make way for their own claimant. Now, the 3rd century AD was the time of crisis. You have Roman uh, soldiers popping up all over the empire claiming to be emperor. You have, you know, a new emperor every couple of days, it seemed like. It was uh, really, it, it manifested the real problem of the Roman Empire, and that was they never solved the succession crisis. So in this game, you're going to go ahead and try to capture a lot of these rival emperors and claim glory for yourself. Now, the game board is essentially a number of grid spaces kind of superimposed on the Mediterranean and the Roman Empire. Um, because this is largely kind of an abstract card game. But essentially how the game is played is you have a number of emperor cards. Now these emperors represent either the military, the senate, or the populace of Rome. That's either red, blue, or yellow. Um, so you go ahead, you mix these up randomly, you actually take a few out, you set them aside, but you put these emperors down uh, in certain designated spaces on the board. Now these emperors have on each side of them they have a, um, in each kind of cardinal direction of them, they have a symbol. Now, the symbol is going to be the same on, for each side, and that also denotes the player sitting there. That's going to be the symbol associated with them, and that's going to tell them where they can play their cards. Now, there's also going to be a number of barbarian cards. You're going to set some of those aside. Some of them are going to be mixed in with the, with the deck of cards. And barbarians can only ever be played to kind of the periphery, the axe uh, uh, symbol side of the uh, boards and those spaces along the periphery of the board. Now, each player will get a hand of four influence cards. Um, there's possibilities that can temporarily go up uh, to five, um, but generally you're going to have four uh, influence cards in the game. Now essentially what you're going to do is each influence card you have has a number. That number is from one to eight. And they're also going to have a suit in there. The suit is either, again, military, senate, or populace, and that's going to be important. But what you can do on your turn is you can place a card adjacent to any emperor that, of course, only on the side that has your symbol. Now, if you're playing with less than four players, uh, the players that are not there, you can actually, uh, the sides that are not being played are kind of wild. Anybody can place there. Again, if you have barbarian cards, you can only place them on the, the, the periphery of the board adjacent to the emperors that way. Now, as you're placing these cards around the board, what you're trying to do is place the highest number next to an emperor. Um, if it's on your side, then you've got a better chance of claiming that emperor. Because what's going to happen is as soon as an emperor is surrounded, meaning all four cardinal points around him have influence cards, then you're going to go ahead and see essentially who is going to claim that card. Now, this is going to lead to certain things here. For instance, if ever there are two or more numbers of the same value, uh, regardless if whether or not, uh, you, know, you know, regardless of the color or the suit or anything, any cards uh, of the same number value just cancel each other out. They're just canceled out. Then whichever card is highest uh, and has the same suit is going to claim the emperor. But if 
there are no other cards left that are of the same suit, then just the highest numbered card will claim that Emperor card. You can go ahead and you can put that in your, your victory pile. Any cards then that are left that are not adjacent to any Emperor, they are removed from the board. Now, as players are placing these influence cards, however, they have frequently certain texts. And there's certain text abilities that will allow them to do different things. For instance, as I say, one card may allow you to actually have a greater hand size. One card may allow you to actually swap a card, uh, swap that card once it's placed with another adjacent card. Some cards actually let you ignore that, that kind of same value uh, thing. Some cards allow you to place kind of a um, greater value on different cards. You can place little tokens that say that card has a plus one, plus two, plus three value to it. So there's all different things you can do with these cards to manipulate it when you play them. Now, however, you've got to be careful because as you're playing the cards, if you play it in a spot that is adjacent to a, you know, one of your symbols, it also becomes adjacent to another card and it's not, a, it's not your symbol. So, for instance, if I'm on the, on the below side and I place the card below a card, that becomes the top card for the player who's playing the top card symbol, right? So he can then score that bottom one using a card that I laid down. So it's not necessarily the cards you lay belong to you. Uh, often it is, but not always is the case, and other, other players can take advantage of those cards you have previously laid down. Now, if ever two emperors are going to be battled over uh, at the same time, the active player gets to decide which one goes first, and it's entirely possible that uh, after that first round, the other emperor uh, will not be able to uh, be captured because that space has been freed up. Now, after you've played a card, you get to select a new card. Essentially, you have a row of four cards. When cards come out to replace them, essentially the, the, the lowest value cards go in one direction, the highest value in another. So what that means practically is if you play a high card, if you play an eight, you can only select a low card. If you play a, a very low card, then you can select any card that's out there. And depending on the number of card that you played, that's going to determine what kind of card you can draw when it comes time for you to draw. So players are going around and around. They are playing influence cards. They are playing barbarians. They are capturing emperors. They are causing all sorts of chaos with the various card abilities, and they are drawing new cards from the row. Now, once players have completed three rounds, they go to scoring. Now, when you go to scoring, you're going to score the emperors. You're going to score any barbarian cards that, that some influence cards have allowed you to take. Uh, they're each worth one. But then you're also going to try to score sets of emperors. Depending on the number of uh, sets you have, you'll get greater scores. And whoever has the highest score wins the Barracks Emperors. All right, so that is basically how you play the game. There's a few other little bells and whistles, but basically that's it. You're trying to capture the emperors. You are playing these cards in, in the various places to do it. Now, I got to tell you, um, this game frankly, feels pretty abstract, right? It's, it's got the Roman Empire theme, which is cool, and the third century theme, which is cool, but really it plays kind of like an abstract card game, almost like a trick-taking game here. Um, but we went ahead and, and I played this with Kim and with, with, with Ray, and we were playing it, and we're, we're going through, and we're, we're, we're placing the, uh, the, the cards, and we're, we're finding out the, the, the depth that comes out of this card play and this game. And it is actually really quite engaging and fun. And you see these opportunities pop up to capture the various emperors, but you realize sometimes, as I say too, when you place a card, you've got to know you're not necessarily going to get that emperor just because of that card you played. Uh, a lot of things can happen after you play that card. Somebody could swap cards there, or somebody could negate that card, or somebody could use that card you placed on a different emperor. So there's a lot of, of, of challenges going on here. But the gameplay here, first of all, it's quick. You know, you're, you're, you're okay, you're deciding what you're going to play. You're, you're playing it. You're doing whatever actions it, it lets you do. You're drawing a new card. And it moves pretty quickly, and those emperors disappear from the board pretty quickly. It's, I'll be frank. It took me a while to catch on to this game, and it, through no fault of the games. It was just it, it was not what I was expecting. It was a little more, um, th there's a little more depth here than I was expecting. I was thinking, okay, I'll just place and, and collect these things, but there's a real depth here. So consequently, um, I wasn't doing pretty good on this, in this first game we, we, you can see here. Um, uh, Ray was doing great, and then Kim actually did, did pretty good. I think Kim actually ended up winning that first game. She uh, was just able to collect enough Emperor cards and have enough sets that she was able to, uh, to get the highest score. I didn't, I hardly had any Emperors by the end of the game. It's tough. And it's a game that the more, kind of the more you get into it, the more you get into the weeds of it, the more you realize just how much depth there is here. 
Now, I would recommend a higher player count. It plays, I think you can do a solitaire. Um, I think this game, I, again, the most I play with is three. Uh, I I think with four, the game would probably really shine and becomes a lot more challenging. But this is a great game. This is a fantastic game. I, frankly, this is a game, when I saw it was kind of abstract and card, you know, card play, I thought it might be fun, but I didn't think it would be great. I thought it might be a good game. This is a great game. This is honestly one of the best abstract games I've ever played. And I say it does have that, that theme painted on, but really it's abstract, and it's one of the best. It is phenomenal. And I should point out, there is some cool flavor text on each one of the emperors talking a little bit about them, which I really did appreciate. Um, but I just, I love this game. I think this game is fantastic. Um, it's light, it's quick, but it packs a huge punch. And it's not just me. We all really loved it. We all thought this is just a phenomenal game. Uh, this is one I'm just itching to get to the table again. It's great. Recommendation for the Discriminating Gamer for the Barracks Emperors is buy it. Thank you once again for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment here on YouTube, on Board Game Geek, on our Facebook page, and on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. I'd also ask you, ladies and gentlemen, to please check out my other channel. That is Cody Carlson, PhD, where we talk about military history, books on history. I upload some of my lectures on that channel. Please check that out. Please subscribe. That would mean a lot to me. Please leave a thumb for this video on Board Game Geek. We really appreciate that. And also, if you are a fan of the channel, please click on our Super Thanks button and leave a tip. Uh, Again, really helps us out. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I'm reminded of that old poem about uh, Roman Britain. When the Romans landed in Britain, the weather proved a teaser. The emperor said, is this rain? But the answer was, hail Caesar. Please somebody help me on my feet again. And I don't know where I'm going and I don't know where I've been. Please somebody help me on the solid ground. It's a long time. Hey, I'm just sitting here at my piano, and I wrote a little song for you guys. I'm not going to sing it because it's not very good.